Great to have all of you here today, and those of you who are watching online, good to have you with us as well. A couple of things wanted to highlight. Today is um, Confirmation Sunday. Next week is First Communion Sunday, so we have families and children all uh, on their journey, uh, their faith journey, as they move from one part to another. And so we celebrate with them and, and with their families as they fulfill that baptismal promise. A couple of other things wanted to highlight uh, the uh, Confirmation uh, retreat has been moved into November as staffing at the camp has changed a little bit and so we'll be there with multiple other churches so you'll hear great stories and, and see great pictures along the way. If you're not online and that means you don't get email, uh, the congregational survey is available in the, uh, in the narthex on the little back table there by the announcement sheets as well. Um, please fill one out today so that uh, we can get those entered and bring the uh, results from our vitality survey together. Uh, this will help us. We have a planning team working behind the scenes, uh, putting some things together. Our goal is to have two um, focuses for the next uh, 12 to 18 months. And so uh, we wanna get everybody's uh, uh, feedback as to uh, what you see happening here at Calvary. Also starting this week, um, Jennifer, who's uh, been working on staff with us now for about two weeks, uh, has put together a, a, a weekly devotion, and so that will go out on Wednesday. So if you are online, uh, watch uh, for an email from the church. Uh, it's really cool. It uh, picks up our theme of uh, who is our neighbor, but it also uh, then has some questions, the Bible uh, reading for the coming week, and it really guides you through and gives you a chance uh, to see a little bit more about where we're going. So on the big screen, those are the kids who are affirming their baptism. Uh, I worked with them all last year online. Boy, uh, to see them in person, you realize some of the ones that looked so tiny and short are actually fairly big. It was just the way the camera was. So it's like, oh, now I know who you are and, and how big you really are. Uh, so uh, the kids, um, it was difficult. It, it, uh, kids that are doing online learning um, during the past year uh, really had to work 10 times harder, and so did their teachers. So. Uh, we want to really lift them up in prayers for sticking with this, and uh, they did uh, pretty well in that uh, they were prepared, had uh, been able to answer different questions and ask questions along the way. So uh, that's a little bit later. That will look a little bit different than every other confirmation service, as <laughs> so much of life does anyways. And special prayers are requested for uh, the Chicago Bears as they play the Raiders this afternoon. Um, so it's going to be a bloody Sunday, I think. Uh, uh, <laughs> so. Bears and Raiders, that's a moral dilemma. I know. I mean, um, last week, Pastor Rufus and I did the um, uh, Packer parking. And um, I've sunk to a new low. I had shared this with Norm earlier in the week. Um, we had like 90 cars that came in. Um, so a huge amount. Uh, but all the folks that came in through the driveway where I was at, I uh, kept saying, you know, go, go pack, go, and I'd have to respond, go pack, and I thought, oh, my family's not going to let me ever come and visit anymore, but um, it was a lot of fun, so I um, encourage you, if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, we uh, oftentimes have high schoolers uh, help with uh, packer parking, uh, but uh, if you want to uh, support one of the ministries here in the congregation, uh, you can just designate which ministry that goes to, and, and we divide that up, and it gets into all the right pots. So um, sign up's online, and we'll send out that link as well. So it's real easy. You just click and show up, and uh, you've got to say, go pack, go. If you have Packers paraphernalia to wear, it, it always helps. Uh, they looked at me kind of sideways, so, but uh, I didn't have any. So other than that, uh, let us all stand as we, you know, yeah, we can stand as we sing our, our opening hymn. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our gathering song of community for the month of October is Love God and Your Neighbor. We'll sing it all through together twice today, but then starting next week we'll do it as a three-part round. Love God with your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Love God with your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Love God with your 
strength and your neighbor as yourself. Love God with your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Love God with your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Love God with your strength and your neighbor as yourself. So please join me as we uh, say this together. This past week, one, two, three. This past week. And we've added another line because of you. Uh, your mission giving, your serving, your stuff behind the scenes that uh, so many people help out to make things happen. Uh, as you can see in the big screen, there's the uh, chalices. Our first communion kids uh, have made a chalice. They will commune from that and then commune their parents and baptismal sponsors next week. Uh, you all provided those chalices for them. And then the other one is um, we added the park bench out front um, by the corner of 9th and Langley. And then uh, one of our families also came by and said, you know what, they're gonna need shade if they're sitting there. And so uh, they planted one of those autumn blazed maple trees all by themselves. They said, could we do that? And they dug the hole, put in the mulch, uh, got the tree there. Um, that's the kind of congregation this is where folks see things and say, I can help. And so uh, we wanna celebrate uh, that attitude and, and that uh, um, sense of purpose for our congregation. So. Those were two other things that were going on this past week and wanted everyone to know about that. So now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Loving God, we look at our lives and the mess we have made, and we ask who can be saved. We fall short of your commandments in so many ways. Forgive us for failing to love our neighbor as you have loved us. Forgive us for being more concerned about our wealth and status than about how best to serve you. Open our hearts and our hands to receive the love and mercy you have to give, and then to freely share the same love and mercy with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Siblings in Christ, with God all things are possible. Now hear the good news for you today. In Christ your sins are forgiven, in Christ you are made whole. Now go and love your neighbor as Christ has loved you. Amen. Our opening hymn is Shine, Jesus, Shine. And just as a word, all of the music today was picked by the confirmation students as some of their favorites. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory
forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day where you teach us to love our neighbor, to know your presence, to see your grace among us. Bless us in our worship this day as we go forward later in faith, in love, and in service towards one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated.
Our first Bible reading today, then, is from Hebrews chapter 4. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden. But all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one whom we trust to render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us now hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who, in every respect, has been tested, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated for the hearing of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 10. As he was sitting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard! It would be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easy for a camel to go through the eyes of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astonished and said to one another, Now who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and follow you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house of brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fear for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecution in all the age to come, eternal life. 
But men who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God. Today is a day the Lord has made. It is a great day in this church because we also have confirmation. And permit me to do two parts of this sermon. One, I will preach as though I'm talking to confirmation students. And the second aspect will be sermon I want to preach to you today. So based on that, I will talk on a topic, hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to your confession. Or hold fast to your belief. Belief is something that is very much special to everyone. From our reading, we know that there was a man that was seeking after Christ ran to him. Christ, he took Christ, he had obeyed all of the laws there. And at the end, Christ told him to do one thing, it would be difficult for him to do. But at the end, he said, well, with men it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Part of holding fast to what we believe is to know that God cares. God cares. God cares for everyone, no matter the state, no matter the condition, no matter how things may be, He cares. Our Hebrew text remind us that the living world is active. It's a two-edged soul. Some of the texts have told us that Jesus is the living world. John tells us that. World made flesh. There are some that believe that Jesus is that living world. There are some that believe that the word of God has that power to change life. Because Jesus, because God cares, Jesus was sent into the world to bring about so many changes to save life. Let us know that Jesus cares about you. He cares about those that went before us. And because he cares, we have been loved and cared for. So when the word of God comes, it comes to regenerate. It comes to renew our mind. It comes to shape our lives. It comes to direct our paths. It comes to comfort us. At the same time, it also comes to tell us that it is okay that with God all things are possible. So part of holding fast to what we believe or holding fast to what you confess is to know that God cares about you and the word of God is our faith. And because God cares, God also sees. God also sees. He sees what we do. He sees what before us, what behind. He sees what we go through. Hebrews reminding us as we hold fast to our faith, this living word, Jesus Christ has the power to see who we are. He has the power to see beyond what we are not able to see. So let us know that. And because he cares and because he sees, there is a power knowing who we are. It is good to know who you are because we're going to be reminding the confirmation students or those confirmant today that they are called God's children. That you are God's child. So knowing who you are is important in this world. We can show the world who we are by loving God and also loving our neighbor. 
Many ways that Calvary has shown that God cares and the way living world is active is true. They are action. They have learned to take care of each other. They have learned to take care of the poor. They have learned to be active in the community. They have learned to sustain others. They have learned to hold fast to the living word of God. They have learned to make their kids come to Sunday school confirmation. They have learned to hold each other and stay with each other despite of the pandemic. Whether it's online or it's in person, they have learned to stay together because the living God word is active. It's a word that kept us bringing us together because the word has power and that's God's word. God's word always and will always has power. That's why Hebrews referring to it has a double edge soon. Those who hunt us know that. And I think people that go to war to know that. Two edges so, right? Both ways. We're also going to be reminding the kids there that there's power in remembering. We're going to need to remember their baptism. For many of them, they were kids, they were babies. But they still need to remember this day. So for you as adults, I would say, remember your baptism. Because your baptism will remind you that you are God's child, that you are mark, that you belong. As part of remembering also, know that you also, you know, when you go and look in a mirror, that mirror also reminds you who you are because you see your face in there. That you not a duplicate, you are original and you are who you are. So let's remember that God cares about us. And we gotta remember who we are. That we are original. We are God's people. We are family. And that we belong and God loves us. Our text for with God, all things are possible. Remember, remind us that with God, all things are possible. You know, God is omniscient. And God is also omnipotent. God is present. God is powerful. God is everywhere. When we need courage, we look up to God. Because we have someone who is a high priest. Remember in the days of old, they had high priests? Every time they made sacrifice for the others, people would come and get laid, that offering, and they make sacrifice. They were not going to the Holy of Holies. The high priest would go and make intercession for them. But today we are reminded that Jesus Christ came as a high priest that we no longer need the Old Testament time, but he has broken barrier that today we have Jesus Christ who is a high priest that is still interceding for us, who is still able to bear weakness even in our weakness that he went through it as a human being and that's why he is called Jesus Christ and he's still seated on the throne and his name is Christ Jesus. It's good to know that someone, Jesus Christ, is interceding. Jesus Christ is our high priest. That we no longer need those sacrifices of goat or animals. Jesus did it all for us. He paid the price for all of us. He laid his life on the cross so that you and myself can be saved. And Hebrew is reminding us when we are weak, Jesus went through it. He rose victoriously. He stayed alive today because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. May God bless you. Our sermon hymn is The Canticle of the Turning. My soul cries out with a joyful shout 
that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, but the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who for you would yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears from the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to age, we remember and hold us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conquering's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring that the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Let us stand as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so let us pray for the world, the church, and for all those who are in need. Loving God, you call your people to live in harmony with you and with one another. Bless all forms of your church in all the many ways we gather in person, online, in our vehicles, outside, and in so many other creative ways. Remind us that we are still united as one through the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Providing God, we thank you and we praise you 
for the ways the earth provides for us. Bless farm workers as they continue this year's harvest and as they look ahead to what is to come. May the foods and the goods that they have worked so hard to produce be a blessing to all who hunger or are in need. Lord, in your mercy. Uniting God, we pray for peace in our world, in our nation, in our homes. Guide all those who have been placed in positions of authority to use their power wisely and for the sake of the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Inspiring God, today we celebrate this year's confirmands who affirm the promises you make to all of us in the water and word of our baptism. Now fill them with your Holy Spirit as they take this important step in their faith journey and inspire us through their witness to continue living out our faith in our everyday lives. Lord, in your mercy. Healing God, many people are suffering this day. Surround with your healing spirit all those who are struggling with pain, whether physical, mental, or spiritual. Give good courage to those who are caregivers, whether in the home or hospital. Lord, in your mercy. And inviting God, bless our efforts to be a welcoming place for our neighbors. Breathe life into, the, into ministry partnerships, both long established and newly formed so that this community of faith can be a part of your call to bring justice and peace to our community and your world. Lord, in your mercy. Now receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts, those things known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. And so may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. I invite you to greet those around you with our Lord's peace. <laughs> and as the congregation let it, is seated, now let us pray for the offering. Lord, we give you thanks for the things that we have brought this day, our time, our talents, our treasures. May they be signs of your gracious love. May you receive them for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we've um, moved this all over the place during the um, uh, past 19 months. So we will receive the bread and the wine, the body and the blood, after we pray the Lord's Prayer. So you can do all the crinkling and un the, uh, all the unpacking, uh, which is uh, awkward for all of us, but then we'll eat together uh, after we pray the Lord's Prayer. And so now may the Lord be with you. And may you lift up your hearts. And so let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and our praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. For through him, you have given to us the promise of eternal life. And so we praise your name and we join all the uh, angels, the people of faith that have gone before us, that are with us now and yet to come in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Now in, <clears throat> in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Now take and eat, for this is my body given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you, it's shed for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so together, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now take the bread as you have received, and receive now the body of Christ given for you. And with the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you, And so now may the body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in faith towards, one, in faith towards Jesus Christ and in grace and love and service towards one another. Amen. Let us stand. As you go forward this day, there's lots to cheer for, and it has nothing to do with football. It has to do with God's grace, God's welcoming, and your ability to serve and give joy and thanksgiving to another in Christ's name. So go forward this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Go now and peace.